let's bury this, let's put it under the rug, uh, because we don't want to hurt the ministry. We don't want to mm-hmm. hurt TBN. We don't want to, you know, shake the empire. TBN had already been dealing with some pretty serious accusations, and, you know, my dad had been accused of uh, sexual harassment of a African-American employee. That you know, had already hit the papers. And this is all public information. If you want if you want to check me out, you can Google any of this. Join the conversation and welcome to Inside Voice. Welcome, friends. You know, throughout the ages, history gives account of great dreamers and visionaries, even men of the Bible whose faulted path led them to do great things. The private stories of these great men and women, however, reveal the human struggle, the sacrifice, the temptations, the victories, and the defeat behind their courageous feats and the building of empires. Well, my guest today has lived a full life of hard work, triumph, conflict, heartbreak, and purpose. He's dined with kings, and yet he still makes room for the poor. His life has been painted with vivid strokes of brilliance, wisdom, and insight, but most importantly, he has embraced the road of humility for the greater work of God in the ever-changing seasons of his life. He's none other than my husband, Paul Crouch Jr. And I want to welcome you, baby, for the second time on Inside Voice. It's always a joy for me to have purposeful conversation with you. Thank you, sweetie. It's an an honor to be here, it really is. And I hope through our stories and, and through our pain and suffering that we can actually help those that are watching. You know, we've talked about this, that these programs that we do are not about you and me, but it's about the viewer and, and yes. trying to bring hope and healing to a hurting world. And that's that's what this is all about. Amen. And that's why we are going to talk from a really transparent and uh, pretty vulnerable place today. And uh, we're just going to share some of your story and what God has done, the enrichments and how he can bless us in the pit when we absolutely feel like our lives have faced the end, the end of an era, the end of a dream. Um, I want you, though, to first give a little bit of background for some of our viewers who might not be familiar with your history uh, and how you served your parents for over 20 years. Uh, I mean, collectively, you, you can tell us, um, at TBN. Yeah, well, I think for the millennial generation, all you have to do is Google Paul and Jan Crouch and a, a plethora of stuff will pop up, you That's know, true. on your search engine and some of it true, much of it not. Mm-hmm. But, you know, the, the thing that that I want people to know is my parents, Paul and Jan Crouch, were true pioneers, number one. They pioneered the whole world of Christian television. You know, they had mentors with Pat Robertson and some others, but, you know, they literally put it all on the line. And in 1973, you know, my parents uh, had come through uh, a season of film production. My dad worked for the Assemblies of God. Uh, He managed a radio station for a season. But in 1973, God called my parents into Christian television. They connected, many don't remember, with Jim and Tammy Baker. And that was the birth of Trinity Broadcasting Network. And literally, you know, my dad used to say all the time that if you were going to pick two people to start what has become the world's largest network, not Christian network, but one of the world's largest networks, the last two people you would choose would be Paul and Jan Crouch. And the simple reason is this. Number one, they didn't have any money. They weren't talented. They couldn't sing. My dad wasn't a preacher per se. He knew the word but he certainly wasn't pastoring a large church or anything. But when God called them, and the lesson for each and every one of us is that they were obedient Mm -hmm. and they said yes to God. They also said, do not despise small Mm -hmm. beginnings because Mm -hmm. TBN literally started in a, a small little studio about the size of this room I'm in right now. Mm -hmm. And it just, went from there. And, and, you know, when God blesses something, 
you got to, you know, you don't know if you're driving the ship or the ship's driving you because I know there were times with my dad, he didn't know, you know, whether to hang on or jump off. It got so crazy at times, but Mm. they were very obedient people and God blessed TBN. And I grew up in that environment in 1973. I'm just a young teenager. And the first seven years of TBN from 73 to 80, I was literally there every day. Uh, I actually went to correspondence high school. I didn't go to normal high school, so I could work with my parents literally every day. I learned lighting. I learned camera. I learned directing. I learned audio. I learned how to clean the toilets. I learned how to run cable. And in those days, literally, we were all doing a little of everything. I opened the mail. I used to take uh, letters to the P.O. box. I mean, it was just, you know, whatever had to get done, we did. And that was a a marvelous learning experience for me. It was, you know, it was just something that as a young teenager, I loved. And I knew at that point, Brenda, I knew that media was going to be my future. You know, as a little boy, you grow up, I want to be a baseball player. I wanted to be a policeman. I wanted to be a fireman. Uh, or a doctor. But at 13, I knew when I walked in that studio for the first time, this was my future. And God really has blessed that since, uh, you know, from that day. Wow. And that road has taken many, many turns. And uh, at one point, you left and started your own company. Right. In 1980, I left. Um you know, I was worried about the rapture in 1988. We were all going to get raptured out here. So I wanted to experience a few things that I didn't think, you know, being full time at TBN. But from the 80s to 2000, listen, I worked with TBN very closely. I helped produce shows. I helped start some additional networks. I worked with TBN. I just didn't work for TBN. And in that 80s and 90s, Uh, I was able to travel and work with Billy Graham. I traveled with Bill Bright. I directed Hour of Power with Bob Shuler. And I I just did a lot of different projects uh, that I would not have had I stayed there full time. But then in 2000, my dad called me and he said, son, you know, we're not getting any younger. Um, You know, I certainly wasn't getting getting any younger, but I had a plethora of, of experience and contacts and certainly uh, a great uh, knowledge base to bring back to TBN. And that's what I did. So in 2000, I came back. And for 12 years, I was there literally every day running uh, production, building new uh, studios. I mean, it was just, it was never a dull moment. And it's, uh, you know, I loved every moment moment of it. Uh, But then in 2012 is what we call the perfect storm. And that's when I left. Yeah. And you went from being really behind the scenes for so many years to really something you may not have realized how gifted you were at being in front of the camera as well. And you were thrust in front of the camera for various reasons, which you can uh, talk about. But uh, it, it kind of led you to this season where you did, you did enter the perfect storm. And many people have questioned well, where did Paul go? Many people were hurt. Uh, it, you know, for years, there's been a lot of questions that have come to us privately. And uh, I think that it it will help to bring some clarity today and some healing for you to be able to talk about this. Yeah. Well, you know, again, in the early 2000s, my dad's health started to decline a little bit. What we later found out is he was dealing, uh, believe it or not, with alcoholism. And I was struggling with that as a son, where the son kind of becomes the father and the father, you know, uh, to the, uh, the son to the father. And so that was an issue. So I started hosting a little daily show they did, we did called Behind the Scenes. And it was a daily report on here's what's going on at TBN. Uh, I did that alone. I did that with my father. I did that with various guests. And then, like you said, I kind of went in front of the camera, uh, kicking and screaming a little bit, and I started to host Praise the Mm -hmm. Lord program. And, you know, when a door opens, you walk through it. And that's Mm -hmm. simply what I did. It was not my goal or my dream Mm -hmm. to ever be, you know, a 
in front of the camera. But I do know, and I do, I did get feedback from people that were ministered by the shows. The interview styles I had was very different than many other hosts we had. So I was just a part of the, you know, of, of the overall pizza, so to speak. And, and I, I brought my own style and flair to all of that. But, you know, it, in late 2010 and 11 is when a lot of drama started to take place. My brother uh, was running a film company called Generation Entertainment. And for years, we were funding money to Generation from TVN to do films. The goal was that the, that money would uh, generate revenue and, and bring revenue back to TVN in addition to being able to air the films and yeah. then let that fund kind of perpetuate itself as we did, would do more and more films in the future. The issue and the problem was that just never came to, to be and that just never came to fruition. And finally, my dad said, okay, we are done funding Generation Entertainment. We're not funding any more money to that corporation. And it was a public corporation. It was had, you know, it, it was on the New York Stock Exchange. And, and there was just some issues with a nonprofit that we were very concerned about. So Matt came back in 2010. Uh, I was on the board. They brought Matt on the board. You know, we were kind of dealing with some issues there. And clearly, <laughs> if you look at the history, my brother wanted me out. And it, we ran into this thing, which still to this day confuses me because it was kind of like a Jacob and Esau moment. And, mm -hmm. you know, my dad, uh, his eyes were dimming in his older age. And my, and my, my brother clearly lied uh, to him about me. Matt went into my personal email there at TBN, unbeknownst to anybody, and found emails of how I was uh, absconding money, how I was having multiple affairs, and he just dug up all of this dirt uh, trying to uh, tear me down. And then, um, which by the way, after all of this research and everything, none of it was true. Uh, that's something that mm -hmm. does not ever come out in this story. Mm -hmm. But the other issue is my daughter, my youngest daughter, Kara, yeah. had been molested and raped in Atlanta, Georgia, by a TBN employee. And we ran into this situation. I wasn't there. My mother and my aunt and uh, others of our family was in Atlanta doing a telethon. This incident happened. And it, it it was it changed the world. It changed everything because Kara finally comes uh, to her mother and says, "This has happened." Kara and her mother go to my mother and uh, Jan Crouch, and she did, did something that just blows my mind, but it's called victim shaming. And they blamed Kara for what went on. 35-year-old engineer, 13-year-old little girl, mm -hmm. and somehow it was Kara's fault. Let's bury this. Let's put it under the rug uh, because we don't want to hurt the ministry. We don't want to mm -hmm. hurt TBN. We don't want to, you know, shake the empire. TBN had already been dealing with some pretty serious accusations, and, you know, my dad had been accused of uh, sexual harassment of a African-American employee. That you know, had already hit the papers. And this is all public information. If you want, if you want to check me out, you can Google any of this. So that's where it got ugly. And what happened is I literally got called and pulled into a, what I called Sophie's Choice. And if you, any of us have seen that movie, you know, that poor lady had to decide which daughter to keep with her and which daughter put to on the train knowing she was going to her death. Yeah. And that is literally what I had to face. I loved my parents. I loved TBN. I loved what we were doing. We were getting tremendous uh, salvations and healing reports. But if I'm going to take a bullet for anyone, I'm going to take a bullet for my daughter. And I said, no, uh, I, I, I believe her. I believe my daughter. I think she was 
uh, abused, and I don't think she's lying. And that's what happens. So then Kara goes and gets an attorney, and once mm -hmm. attorneys get involved, you know, yeah. Katie bar the door. It was like mm -hmm. literally opening a Pandora's box. Mm -hmm. And for years, that information was actually withheld from you. You didn't know about what happened to Kara uh, because it was kind of hidden from you for whatever reason. But uh, when you did find out, uh, there was proof and the employee had been let go. And uh, so this put you all in estrangement. It put you all in, in such a difficult position and a very, very painful one. Walk us through um, those days as you gave your resignation, as you had been asked to, thinking this is just temporary. Yeah. And here, here was the perfect storm. And this is where I think Matt was uh, this master manipulator, in my opinion. He, he saw, you know, an opportunity and he, he took it. Honest before the Lord to save TBN and to honor TBN, I confronted my parents on two very serious issues. One was what I mentioned earlier, the alcoholism. My dad literally was going on the air with me drunk, literally where he was stumbling for words. He had what we called marble mouth. And, and we were afraid on live television, when you're not in your right mind, God only knows what he could say or, or, yeah. you, know, or, or, or you know, blurt out. We just didn't know. And he was literally going on Praise the Lord program. I had a conversation with my brother and my mother after dad went on live Praise the Lord, just, just not in his right mind. And we got my father help. We got him doctors. We got him as much uh, assistance as we could professionally to try to deal with alcoholism. The doctor told me, your father is an alcoholic just classic. And what's the first thing that alcoholics do is they deny, deny, deny. But what I did with the assistance of our production director, Bob Fatma, he, he gave me a DVD of one of the behind the scenes that my dad and I did where dad was just not there. Mm -hmm. And I handed it to my father one night. And this is where as a son, when you're confronting your, your own parent, On, on the pain that he was suffering. Mm -hmm. And, yes. you know, his dealing with alcoholism, we know that is just trying to mask the pain of, I'm sure, trauma in his background. Yes. We, we, that's yes. a whole nother show. Yeah. But um, he watched the DVD that night and he came back to me that the next morning and he almost came to me like a little child. And he just said, oh, PJ. He called me PJ. He goes, I'm so sorry. I am so sorry. So we kind of dealt with that and, and reconciled it, but he was not real happy with me that I had, you know, kind of brought up the elephant in the room. And then I also, as uh, chief of staff, had gotten uh, some footage from a security camera in Orlando, Florida, of a black and white camera that covered our parking lot. And I saw footage of my mother and an employee there, a guy named Les Cheveldayoff. He played Jesus at, at that theme park. And they were hugging and kissing inappropriately. You know, they were kissing like married people do, not like a peck on the cheek, thanks, and I'm out of here. And I confronted my mother on that issue also by the phone and when I did, she, again, deny, deny, we're friends. I'm literally holding the phone this far from my ear because she was just yelling and tearing me down, saying, how could you bring this up? So both of my parents were not thrilled with me, but I was confronting what I thought I needed to do as chief of staff to save TB in the embarrassment. And yeah. when my daughter's situation came about, uh, all they did is look at me and said, Get Kara to drop the lawsuit. Get mm -hmm. Kara to drop her lawsuit. 
They were looking at me. She's your daughter. She's your daughter. Get her to drop it. And by that point, the attorneys were in charge and I couldn't. So out of your hands, it was out of my hands. So they asked for my resignation and I was so like tired of being caught in this Mm -hmm. storm and caught between a rock and a hard place. I said, fine, I'm out of here. And so Mm -hmm. I left and, you know, dad called me a few days later and said, PJ, let's let this settle. Let's, um, we're going to do an investigation, which they did. All of the email stuff is garbage. And at that point, he said, in six months, we'll bring you back and, you know, we'll all, let's move on. Let's, and the problem is, after about six months, my father's health truly broke. And within mm-hmm. a year of me leaving, he was dead. And at that point, Matt moved in, moved in with my mother. They took over the board. You know, they changed whatever they wanted to change. And there, the, at that point, I was, I, I couldn't come back if I wanted to. Yeah. Well, and, and God knew, and he was faithful to you. And I think this is what we really want to speak to for people today, because many people were hurt in that and, and just felt left with no answers. Um, and so many people, more importantly, are hurt by their own devastation and the end of their dreams, the end of, I mean, there's family squabbles all over the place. There's so much uh, polarization that we're experiencing and mental health issues and people are hurting. And I don't say that as, as a way of uh, labeling or throwing mud. This is about hurting humanity. And the fact that God will use flawed, broken people, but he also brings us, because we are followers of Christ, if he loves us, his blessing to us is to bring us into that place of where it's, it feels like fire. We're in the crucible. And the blessing, though, is there. So I want you in the next few minutes to let's, let's really talk about how has God walked you through things and helped you face things that have developed that might not have without this experience. Let's talk about that. Well, we talked about this, you and I, and I, I've thought many times, I thought, you know, if I could change anything or if I could change the past, would I still leave or would I have fought to stay on the board or, or changed anything? And honestly, after going through what I've gone through, I don't think I would change anything. I mean, like you said, we, you know, it's through the fire that the, that the steel is hardened yeah. and sharpened. And, and God did a, a tremendous work in me. And I'm 51 years old. I thought, okay, my, the rest of my life and my career will be TBN, helping my parents, the transition from their you know, passing to a new generation. I really thought that was the future, and I'd had that prophesied and all this other stuff. And, you know, but when God closes a door, and this is a lesson for each one of you watching, I promise you, he will open multiple doors in various directions. I have never seen the righteous forsaken or his seed begging for bread. And I saw that. I saw God when I literally thought I had lost everything. Uh, I I got a two-week severance from TBN, literally two Mm -hmm. weeks from my own father and my own, you know, that ministry. Um, I didn't have any clients. I didn't have any real you know, other work, but God scooped me up and there were other networks that had heard I'd left and I, I got uh, put on salary with them. And, and one of the prophecies, you know, that, that did, I think come to pass because I got a lot of them at that point. And one of them was, you remember the bumblebee prophecy? Yes. Yeah. That they saw a field of flowers And each flower was a new network or a new opportunity or a new ministry or a new, um, uh, you know, digital platform, whatever. It was the media. And this prophecy said you were the bumblebee and you were literally flying from network to network, from ministry to ministry, 
pollinating and and as i as i landed and left the flowers got bigger and brighter and more color and you know by the time i flew out i mean the field had gotten uh much much brighter and bigger and so you know that's literally what took place you know since then i've had the opportunity to work with some of the most amazing men people networks and uh, as you and i both know we're starting our own network and our own TV programs and our own ministry. We have our own TV studio now. Mm -hmm. uh, we're looking at building a new TV studio in, in Israel, believe it or not. That's coming around the corner. And so it's all been God. The mm -hmm. Yeah. The future is brighter now than I've, yeah. than I've ever seen. And mm -hmm. I'm just excited to get up, <laughs> to get up every day and just say, okay, God, I'm ready to start swinging. Let's go. Well, you know, I think that we like to focus on restoration as being the outward things and some of those things you just mentioned, but really restoration begins with the heart. It begins with the transformation of the inner man. And, it, you know, it's situations like this that force us to have to unpack and take a deep look at the wounds that we carry, the wounds of the past, the present wounds, and to take those and lay them at the feet of Jesus. And I, I just want you to know that I'm proud of you. Uh, I'm proud of your children. They are thriving. And what the enemy means for harm, God promises us who love him, that he will turn and use it for our good. And I believe that means for the good of the kingdom, not just for us personally, but I do believe in you, babe. I know that uh, I have gained tremendous respect for you in watching you carry the things you've had to carry with grace. You've, uh, you've handed them to the Lord and you've made yourself available to him and to, you know, a variety of clientele and ministries. And uh, I just want you to know that I'm proud of you. And I think, you know, I've known you for a lot of years. I knew you uh, I've known you since 2010 and it was 2012 when you left, but today you are a better man. Well, and I pray that I'm a better woman. <laughs> in living well, I with think you. we have helped heal each other. We've talked yes. about that, but you know, I, I can honestly say, um, you know, with as much manipulation and if this story ever got told completely, I mean, people would literally just think this is a bad movie if they saw you know what was told and uh the the, the man manipulative aspect you know the questions that they asked my 15 16 and 17 year old daughter in the lawsuit uh just absolutely horrifying what what they were putting her through during the lawsuit now in that lawsuit you know, Kara won. She went to the court and a jury of 12 unbelievers listened to the story and awarded her $3 million. Now, in my opinion, nobody wins in a lawsuit like that. I mean, it's horrible to go through. It's, it's humiliating. I know TBN spent probably 10 or $20 million trying to uh, defame her, trying to call her a liar, trying to do this. And, and, you know, the thing that just blows my mind, Matt and Lori have two little boys, Kaylin and Cody, and the thought of putting those boys through the trauma that they put my daughter through, I mean, I just can't even fathom it. I would rather kill myself than harm a child like that. But the bottom line is this, God forgives, I forgive, I forgive my brother, I forgive everybody involved. If I don't forgive, you know, that's on me and it's going to tear me up and eat me up. And like you said, Kara is thriving right now. She has a beautiful yeah. little daughter and she's yeah. a, a registered labor and delivery nurse uh, at a hospital. And she just, uh, she and I talk all the time. And so it, it's, it's, it's hard, but going through the fire Yes. in my opinion, makes us better, even though it's not fun, as we both know. And our prayer is for healing, for healing in the body of Christ, 
healing in your family. That doesn't mean we have an agenda. That means we pray for healing of relationship and we believe for that. And uh, I just know that it's, we don't get the beauty without facing the pain. And so uh, we just want to be an encouragement, right, to everyone. And I just want to thank you for being vulnerable, for talking about the things that uh, really you, you, you're you released to do now. You, for many years you weren't, but you're released in this season. And um, thank you for being here. Thank you, baby. You're doing a good job. Keep it up. Thank you. And friends, we appreciate you. And we hope that you, out of all this, can see that God wants to meet, meet us in the place of our brokenness, in the place of our humanity. He is the one that brings us to restoration, brings us to know who he is in the midst of the fire, where we can have great joy and great peace, no matter the circumstance. We love you. Join us again next time. I'm Brenda Crouch.